we're going to be discussing the wave particle duality. So this is something that was coined by um, de Broglie, for example, and others as well. But this whole idea that light can behave both like a particle and a wave, it's duality. It's, it can behave sometimes like a particle, sometimes like a wave. So for example, particle, that's when it's you know bouncing or doing a photoelectric effect. Wave, for example, when it's doing diffraction. And it turns out that matter, so things with mass, things like electrons or whatever, they can also behave like waves as well as particles. So it's a bit weird. So uh, we have this equation actually for it, which goes like this. It goes lambda equals h over p. This is from your data booklet. And what's lambda? Well, lambda is the wavelength, so that's in meters. h is actually called Planck's constant. It's 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds. All right, and then we've got momentum. Well, momentum p equals mv, so that must mean... Um, uh, mass, let's see, that's kilograms, and V is in uh, meters per second. All right, so this is what's kind of strange about it, right, is that, for example, you've got light that can behave like a particle. I mean, maybe, but that also means that light has a momentum. So light must have a momentum, but momentum doesn't really work for light if it has no mass. You know, we can agree that light doesn't have any mass, so you can't use p equals mv for the momentum of light. But don't worry, you can use this one. If you have a wavelength of light, then you can find the momentum of light. So this whole idea that, you know, you have particles, waves, particle wave duality, that's why I put this one right here. Maybe I was just too tired when I found this one right here. I found it last night. It was like at 2 in the morning, and I just started laughing so hard. I had tears in my eyes. Now, this is probably just because I was really tired, and I'm a really big nerd. But here we go. It's a, Do you remember this old video by uh, Pico Taro? I think it's got like half a billion views. My daughters thought it was hilarious. You know this guy who goes like, I have a pen, I have an apple, uh, an apple pen. So, here you go. I have a wave. I have a particle. Uh, a particle wave. And it's a picture of De Broglie. <laughs> I don't know why I liked it so much. This really made me laugh out loud. I really did LOL. But there we go. All right, let's keep going then. So, what does this really mean? Well, again, particles then, it sounds really weird. They can have a wavelength. In other words, electrons can diffract. And no, it's only waves that can do that. You know, if electrons fly through, you have these, you know, spots of, you know, lots of brightness and not so much. So, yes, they can actually diffract. It's true. And just another weird one, light can have momentum. It can push things. So, although we don't imagine, like I was just saying here, that light, you know, P equals MV has no mass, but light does have a momentum because it's just H over lambda. So, that means that because light has momentum, it can, uh, it can impart an impulse. Remember this equation for impulse, J is, uh, what is it, F delta T equals delta P? So in other words, these photons from the sun, you know, these photons from the sun, they can bounce off of this and go like this, and that means that they can actually give this solar sail ends up with like a push. And this is a real design. They've tested it out, actually. This could work. So if you set some big, giant sail, something really, really light, but a really huge surface area, photons, although each of them doesn't have much of a push, lots of photons on the sun, eventually they do add up to something pretty serious. You can actually use it as a means of propulsion. We've tested this out as humans. We've made small versions of these. It works. So this is actually a viable way to get around, which is kind of cool. So what does this mean? Well, we can do some examples. So let's just take a look at this. Let's see if we can solve some things here. So we have light of frequency uh, 457 kilohertz is incident on a wall. What's the momentum of each photon? So how do we find the momentum? Well, normally, again, we would think that P equals mv, right? But light has no mass, so we can't use that. So we need the other version, which is just lambda equals h over P. And let's just solve for P. So that means then that we can just say, all right, well, P must just equal H over lambda. Let's just write these numbers down. H is Planck's constant, so 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. And we have divided by the wavelength. Ooh, I don't know the wavelength. So I'm going to need to know that. So how am I going to find that? Well, I know this other equation uh, from my formula book or data booklet. It's how do you convert frequency because this is a frequency we found. How do you convert from frequency to wavelength? You have this one, V equals F lambda. It's often called the wave equation. So if I use this one right here, then I can get uh, lambda by itself. So I can say, okay, that means uh, lambda will be equal to, let's see, it'll be V over F. But because it's light, 
it's going to be c over f if you get my meaning c is the speed of light so lambda is c over f okay and let's actually go ahead and figure it out what is this well this is 3 times 10 to the 8 that's the speed of light uh, meters per second divided by the frequency which is 457 but keep in mind it's kilohertz don't forget that so because of that then I put the times 10 to the 3 that's what goes there all right so let's go ahead and calculate this whoops I just made that 3 way mess here so let me go ahead and just calculate that first part here so I'll do the um, I'll find the wavelength first so I'll do uh, let's see a fraction here I'll say 3 times 10 to the 8 all that divided by 457 with three zeros and I end up with this number here so 656.455 all right so lambda 656.455 and these would just be meters which is actually something crazy that's a crazy wavelength this maybe isn't realistic at all but oh well so we'll just put this number in so 656.455 but keep in mind there's lots more decimals so remember whenever you're doing calculations keep all the decimals so in other words when I do my answer right here now I'm ready to do p equals h over this number then I'm just going to make a fraction I'm going to put an h which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 all that just divided by the answer that keeps all the decimals so I don't have to worry about rounding do you want to get 1.00997 let's say okay so 1.00997 times 10 to the power of 10 to the minus 36 which is really really small now I'm allowed uh, three significant figures, so I'll say then the momentum is going to be approximately, let's see, it'll be 1.0. This number right here will round up to a 1 because of that 9, so I'll say 1.01 times 10 to the minus 36. And what are the units of momentum? It's, uh, well, no, it's mv, so that'll be a kilogram meters per second squared. Yeah, but of course it's a weird one for momentum because light has no mass. That's why it is a little bit weird, but this really is the momentum, at least, of the light, of the photon. All right, so it's very, very small, which should make sense. It should be small. It's just a photon. It's just one piece of light hitting you. You don't really feel like there's much hitting you, but there is. There's a slight push from photons. Let's do another example. What's the wavelength of a ball that has a mass of 0.61 kilograms that's traveling with a speed of 5.1 meters per second? Well, again, let's use our equation here. We have uh, lambda equals h over p. We just want the wavelength of a light. So actually, uh, here we go. We just have this, except because this is a real ball with a mass, that means we can actually figure this out. We can say, well, what's h? We know that. It's 6.63 times... Actually, wait, I'll leave it for now. I'll say then that, uh, let's see, lambda equals h, true. And what's p? p equals mv for something that has mass. So there we go. I can just figure this out because p equals mv. So there we go. So now I can put in all my numbers. So lambda equals 6.63. This is h, by the way. Uh, times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds. All that over the mass, which is 0 0.61 kilograms. All that times the speed of 5.1 meters per second. And there's no conversions needed. Those are nice numbers. Away I go. So I'll just do a fraction. And I'll do the same thing, so 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, all that over, and again it's 0.61 times 5 point, what was it, 5.1. So there we go, I've got 2.131147. So this is a very, very small wavelength, right? If I'm only allowed two significant figures, then I'll say that the wavelength is approximately, let's see, 2.1 times 10 to the minus 34 meters. This is my final answer. Here we go, so we're done this one. Now, is this a crazy small number? Yes, but this is a good thing. Because your wave, in other words, in order to make this ball diffract somehow, we'd have to be looking at you know sizes on the order of you know 10 to the minus 34 meters, which is crazy, insanely small. It's way, way, way smaller than the radius of a nucleus. So in other words, we don't have to worry. There's no danger of this ball diffracting and interfering with itself. But on very small objects, on very small scales, yes, they can. But in this case, this is a ball. So no, we don't have to worry about this ball diffracting.